cho chosen prayer for the message that we're trying to offer, we uh, have a series that we've been doing, Gifts of Christmas Past, Present, Future. Part of the gifts I think you could say would be a tradition that we started just last year, which is to supply St. Anne's Catholic Church with cookies. They offer a meal to homeless on Christmas Day. And so we asked the congregation, you, to um, participate in this, and, and we did it for the first time ever. And we got, we had 96 dozen last year. It overwhelmed St. Anne's, so we responded so greatly. That it was twice what they thought they were going to get. So we told them that we certainly would be glad to participate again. So we're on the street now two years in a row, and we asked you to participate. And I just heard from from Linda that, you know, we were trying to get 100. We have 140 dozen cookies. So give yourself a great, big thank you. And there are a lot of those out there in Fellowship Hall, so we better pray and preach. Try out some of those 140. Appreciate the reading of the scripture earlier from verses 1 through 7. Let me continue that Luke story from verse 8. Alright, so keep that in mind that you're listening to God's word to you. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy to all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to you, God. God. Let's pray. Lord, we're thankful for your word each and every day, but as we read it and hear it, we pray your spirit would bring to us a clearer, deeper understanding of this miracle that you became human, the incarnation, forever, and that you are with us always, forever. In the words of my mouth, meditation of our hearts, be acceptable to our rock and our maker. Amen. So if you've been here the last couple of weeks, you know we're in a series on following the Christmas Carol by Dickens, and a couple of weeks ago we started with Bah Humbug, and we kind of looked at that Advent was a time for us to open our eyes as Marley is trying to offer Scrooge in Christmas Carol, and that we see that Dickens' underlying theme is a theme of redemption for Scrooge as a, as a miser and a person disconnected to society, even as Christ is offering redemption in the scriptures for all the world. And then the second Sunday, we looked at the gifts of Christmas past, and we saw that Advent is a time to wake up our senses, which we allow to become numbed by the noises and the rush of life. And this collective objective of all our senses is to experience the gift of Christmas past, 2,000 years ago, the incarnation of God becoming human, and how the past affects us today in the now of our lives. And so today we come to the gifts of Christmas present. So if the past is about memory, if the future is about dreams, then the present is about the now of today. Now several of you have told me how December has already been just a blur. And, and i got news for you. We have two more days. And yet we were present for every one of those days, and yet perhaps not present in the moment. 
And so here Dickens invites you and me to join Scrooge in taking a journey, being led by the ghost of Christmas present, that we might be shown things that we've looked at but we haven't seen. To experience through the eyes of others around us but we've never noticed. Now, my favorite of the three spirits is this guy, the ghost of Christmas present. He transforms the room right next to Scrooge's bedroom. You can see the light coming from under the door, and he opens the door, and the light is shining, and there's all this food and this, this pile of stuff there. And, and I think that it's, it's certainly... Um, the, the line that is memorable to me is the one that, in a booming voice, in this festive, um, joyful kind of banquet atmosphere, says, Come in, come in, and know me better, man. Know me better, the ghost of Christmas present. And this is the, um, I think it might be in another slide too, is it? This is the um, original illustration. Oh, that's really bad. <laughs> it's a lot better from afar, yeah. The original, well, look on the front of your bulletin. It's the original illustration. Don't blame the, the IT guys. I gave them the thumbnails, so it's all my fault. You know, the time they look pretty good that way. Uh, but you get the idea. The original illustration on the front of your bulletin is from John Leach, who is in 1843. And, and most of the films have depicted the Ghost of Christmas Presents in this kind of an overpowering figure. But the best one, by far, number one, who was it? Edward Woodward, the English actor who played in the 1984 George C. Scott rendition, where he is um, the one on the left. And, and here it is in that scene where it's just this beautiful, festive, uh, area. In fact, when Scrooge goes in there, it's like his senses are on steroids. You know, they, they all of a sudden he can smell the turkey, he can feel the warmth of the fire. Remember the ghost of Christmas past was kind of distant and disconnected? And here, it's all right there because he's in the present. It's all right there that he's engaging with this. The past and future are simply nows that you have ever either experience or will experience, but the present, that's the realness that you and I are experiencing right now and what Scrooge was experiencing. The Ghost of Christmas Present shows uh, Scrooge people and places in his city that he never would have seen without the assistance of this ghost. Sometimes that's all it takes to notice. Maybe someone has helped you see someone who's having troubles, people in plight, neighbors with needs, community members who are struggling just to make it. You see, poverty in 1843, when this was written in Dickens, England, was much worse than it is today. But we still have Tremendous problems of poverty. Just yesterday, I received an email from a minister friend in Philadelphia who told me he had just returned from a beautiful service, a memorial service, where they had 12 luminaries. Remember people used to put lights in bags, those luminaries? And there were 12 of them on the steps of one of the churches. And all these people gathered around for memorial service each one of those luminaries representing a homeless person who Philadelphia had lost from exposure or hunger in 2018. Twelve people died. Philadelphia, Lancaster, any city. There's always two stories on the street, right? There's a story of joy and there's a story of despair. There's a story of plenty and a story of want. There's a story of delight and desperation, the story of the haves and the have-nots on any street in any city. This was no different in Jesus' first night on earth in Bethlehem. 
The baby born of Mary came in the poverty of a feeding trough because there is no room in the inn. That's homelessness. You could say Bethlehem is symbolic of the many places of suffering in our world. The Bethlehem of today might be along the U.S.-Mexican border right now of desperate immigrants. The Bethlehem of today might be those scorched houses in Southern California demolished by fire and uninhabited because of the um, the need for those people to go to friends and neighbors and community members. The Bethlehem of today, I just read the paper, might be yet another bombing by Al-Qaeda over there by the Somalia Palace where people, innocent people, were once killed in the presidential palace. You know, we've got scripture that makes it clear that the Bethlehem was the chosen place where God came to earth, the incarnate baby Jesus, to offer redemption to the world. And, and I think about it, what if you had been there? What if you had been in the, the now of Bethlehem of 2,000 years ago, and the city is still, the silent stars we sing about, the crying of a newborn baby, the unimaginable future of two years from now, if we were back there in Bethlehem, of Herod's murderous baby boy going on the rampage. Could we ever have imagined 2,000 years ago in the present that the Bethlehem would be what we in the future would be singing in that song, yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light, the hopes and the fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. That's the gift of Christmas present on that first Christmas in Bethlehem. And that's the gift of Christmas present today in the now in which you and I live. And what is that gift? It's a message of hope for a world that is filled with needs and despair, a hurting world all around us. <clears throat> I think it's easy to get distracted at Christmas. All the lights, all the decorations, all the music, the concerts. <clears throat> it makes it much harder to keep the message in perspective. As one person said, at its heart, the first nativity is a story born out of poverty, where scarcity is transformed into abundance by a God who will stop at nothing to be with us. You see, it's easy to get wrapped up in the magnificent glory, glory in excelsis Deo, and forget the angels are singing to shepherds. The shepherds are the impoverished of that region, living in poverty, or there wouldn't be shepherds. Now this is the same message that Dickens is trying to share with Scrooge. And this is the message, I believe, that all of us can take away today into the now of our lives and into whatever present situation you're in. The gift of Christmas present is to remind others that God is with them, joining them in their poverty. Join in them in their difficulty. Join in them in their despair. Not as a means of opening the divine hand into their neediness, but to join them in their poverty because all through the scriptures, poverty is near to God's heart. The, the poor you will have with you always, Jesus said. And blessed are the poor, he says. That God is with the poor is why Dickens has the ghost of Christmas past take Scrooge to the home of Bob Cratchit, his counting clerk. Seeing such a meager meal for a Christmas dinner and with all these children around this table to feed, Scrooge hears Tiny Tim say his famous words there, God bless us everyone, and then Scrooge and the ghost of Christmas present get in a bit of a heated exchange 
of whether this child would live and the ghost of Christmas present says, none of my kind will find this child in the future. And then in probably what is perhaps the most powerful scene in all of the movie, the ghost of Christmas present tells of this child's impending death and he gets right down into Scrooge's face and he says, so perhaps in the future you will hold your tongue until you have discovered what the surplus population is and where it is. It may be that in the sight of heaven you are more worthless and fit to live than millions than this poor man's child. And then if that's not enough, Dickens has the spirit to take Scrooge to another area in the community of desperately poor people. Why do you bring me here, Scrooge says, and in one disturbing and very shocking scene, the ghost lifts up his robe to show two destitute, scrawny, emaciated little children. Scrooge, bending back, says, what are they? To which the spirit says, they are your children. Ignorance and love. The ghost of Christmas present is trying to teach Scrooge and us to see that there are shepherds in Bethlehem in our own cities. Right now, today, in the present. We see the same message when we look at Luke's gospel very carefully. When you read the first Sentence. If you read Luke, you know, Luke always gives you details. Luke gives you specifics. He's a doctor. He likes that. He says, a specific time and a specific place. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken for the entire Roman world. He even tells you who's in office at the time, so you'll know exactly what it is. In those days, and then we learn that they travel from Nazareth down to Bethlehem in order to register. We, we learn that the baby is born. We learn that the baby is put in a manger, a feeding trough. But then Luke gives us something completely unique and very startling. Angels. Uh, an angel appears to some shepherds in a nearby field. What is not said by that angel is the phrase Luke used in verse 1, those days, but rather today, this day, in the present. I, I really like how the New Revised Standard Version says that what's in your bulletin is a New International Version, but the Revised Standard Version says, to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah of the Lord. For you is born this day. Matt Rawls compares those two statements. In those days, the palace ruled the world. But on this day, the world is being turned upside down. In those days, the shepherds were unimportant. But on this day, the shepherds are receiving the kingdom of God. In those days, we're simply reading about a miracle. In this day, on this day, we expect a miracle. And the angel's proclamation is timeless. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who will save all the world. Here's the one of the greatest theological truths in all the Bible, right here in this sentence. The incarnation, God become human. Emmanuel, God with us. This is the gift of Christmas present. Because God's presence with us is an ever-present reality. Presence is a world that comes with timelessness. Because it's always in the present. Which is the place where God resides. That's where God lives. In the present. Today. In the now. In the newspaper this week, I have uh, these... Uh, Funny little cartoons on my 
office door. Usually Dennis the Menace, he's usually in trouble. But uh, this one's Family Circus, I like them too. So she's holding little daughters, holding a um, catalog with a Santa on it. And she's asking, did we remember to get Jesus a present for his birthday? Got that. As we celebrate Christmas in two days, <coughs> may God move our hearts forward from thinking those days when we thought that Christmas was only about gifts, food, and to thinking this day. This day is how God's presence is in with us now. No matter where we are. In the now, the present, forever. May all of us, knowing the joy in the company of the heavenly host, proclaim the good news of Jesus' birth to all the shepherds in your Bethlehem's. Glory, glory in Joseph's day. Lord, as we open our scripture once again, feed us the truth that you would have us to share the good news that Jesus is born today, this day. God with us.